Today I'm going to read you a story. Minho's Dad and the Sea. Are you ready? Yeah. The sea joyful jiggled under the morning sun. It moved up and down as if shaking its shoulders and head. The waves seemed to step back away and giggle, but when the boy chased after them, they soon rushed forward and casually stretched out their playful hands. Fluffy clouds in the sky, as wide as the sea, were dancing to the tune of the tide. Mino, where are you, Mino? At the sudden sound, the waves broke in surprise and crimped away. He sprang to his feet. Fine grains of sand fell from his bottom as he stood up. There you are. I've been looking for you quite a while. Let's go. It's time for breakfast. Breakfast. We have a busy day ahead. Why are we having guests again? Holidays, holiday season. The town will be bustling of people for about a month. It was the end of July, and summer has just started. Fresh but salty wind was blowing from the sea. Mom, will there be any kids my age? Well, maybe. Mom took Mino's hand and pulled him along. If some come. I know a wonderful place that I can show them," he murmured. "A wonderful place." Over there, a pine forest was at the end of his fingertip. Mom gave him a. Tight tug. I see you have found a really great place to play," she replied, in a bit of a shaky voice. Three years had passed. Mina was only five years old at that. That pine forest actually soothed his crying. Dad is over there in the sea. Look how he smiles. He's looking over us and watching how fast you grow. No, now, no more crying. Mino's mom took the town folks' advice and and rewrote the house to make more rooms. She would use it as a guest house during the summer holidays. The front door was wide open. A girl was washing her feet at the water water foot right next to the door. Her feet were small and pale. I wonder what is her name. Oh my! The guest was the, must have already. Arrived already. I was not expecting them until afternoon. Mino lingered distinctly next to the bucket, eyes wide open. The girl looked up. I live here. Where are you from? She put a smile on her face. I'm from Seoul. How old are you, Mino? Instantly asked her dad, "I'm eight. What's your name?" "I'm Jungmin." Mino could not think of anything more to ask. She started at him blankly and then crouched down. She washed her feet squeaky clean and poured a bucket of water over them. Her feet looked like fine shells on the beach at low tide. Is there a beach in Seoul? Mino earthly asked, n n "No." She shook her head sideways. There is no sea. How dull! Her eyes widened, and soon she smiled faintly with her eyes. 
I have never seen a bitch in my life. I believe there is one here, isn't it? I saw it on my way here on the ship. A very big bitch. Mina wanted to shrug with pride. At that very moment, his mom called, Mino, come and have breakfast. She must have already finished cleaning the guest room. She came closer with a wet rag in her head. I heard that you come from Seoul. My goodness, you're a pretty girl. Can I ask your name? The girl blushed. I'm Jung Min. Well, my, that's a pretty name. I believe your mom's looking for you. Why don't you go to your room? Okay, thank you. I'll show you the beach later, okay? She looked back and laughed. Her laughter sounded like a small wave. Her name is Jong Min. That's a boy's name. Don't you think so, Mom? Following his mom, Mino couldn't stop steal, stealing glances at her at her room. She, he didn't even notice that his mom was watching and grinning at him. The sunlight got stronger. All the stores were open, and parrots were already set up all over the beach. Mino was. Eager to show her everything, he was anxious to tell her the secrets of the sea that nobody knew. The two of them ran straight to the pine forest. They were could admire the sea every night. The pine forest, which was the border between the town and the beach, couldn't. Mimic, I mean, mimic the sound of the waves. With the hits back to the pine forest, Mino pointed to the end of the sea with his straightened index finger. My dad is somewhere over there. Jung Min was confused at first. Your dad? Where? He flexed his finger and pointed once again. Over there, where you mean in the sea? Sitting down, he took off his shoes and and said in a cheerful voice, "You will know when we get closer." She also took her shoes off. The sand felt warm. In no time, the two were holding hands and lopping. I mean, lopping. Across the muddy sand, so where is your dad? The sea approached them from a distance. They danced along as they ran, and they took a few steps back with the tide. Mino lifted his hand up and again pointed to the horizon. Over there, taking turns looking at him, and then the sea. She tilted her head. What's your dad doing over there? He went speechless for a moment. What would his dad be doing in the sea? My dad is. He shouted. What about your dad? The sea count wave was rushing in. It was higher than the first. It's at the edge of the ocean. He's at the edge of the ocean. He's at the edge of the ocean. The thrill of the wave attacked him. It was higher than the second. Mino leaped up again, pulling and pushing the water. Jung Min stopped completely. What? Shrugging waves pounced over. She plopped down. Jung Min, are you all right? Mino cried out in surprise, drenched to the skin. She was back on her feet. <laughs> she giggled cheerfully. <laughs> He chuckled. Likewise, meeting her eyes. He smirked and said, "I told you, my dad keeps pulling and pushing the tide from there. 
Uh-huh, she nodded in agreement. I pushed the wave and back. I pushed the wave and back. The sea goes back way over there in the evening because my dad pulls it way back. Really? Sure. That's how my dad gives me and my mom something to eat for dinner. Mino was just about to tell her the most interesting part of the story. Jungmin! Her mom and dad called. Mino awkwardly stepped back. Mom! Dad! She rushed into her dad's arms and he picked up her with ease. Oh dear, my little girl looks like a drowned rat now. Her mom's forced creased in in conquer. You need to get changed as soon as you get back. Don't you want to catch a cold? You don't want to catch a cold, do you? Sitting on her father's shoulders, Jung Min looked back at Minho. Can you tell your dad not to send too much water towards me next time, please? I will. Mino's shoulders dropped down. He watched the family walk away for some time and quickly wiped his eyes with a clenched fur feast. He, he crunched down and found a, pot, a fine empty shell near his feet. He fiddled with the shell for a while. Suddenly, he stood up to throw it at the sea with all his might. The sea opened its mouth wide. He brought both hands to his mouth. He drew up all his strength so that it could be heard at the edge of the ocean. Dad! Dad! The waves come rumbling to answer this his voice. With Mino on its shoulders, the sea pulled back again. Beautiful seashells were laughing kindly under his feet. The